Welcome everyone to the second episode of UCL Econ Research Digest. Today, I'm gonna talk about a very topical issue and that's the impact of COVID on mental health. And specifically, we're gonna focus on what's happening at your work and the relationship of that with your mental health. And for that, I'm gonna talk about one of the leading experts in the field, a labor economist, Professor Fabian postel -Winne. Hello, Fabian. Hi, Ramin. So in order to kick, kick start the conversation, could you give us an idea about the magnitude of these crises, about the size of this mental health crisis? Yes, so there, there, there are many ways to answer this question. I, the easy way is, is to, which is you know, already not, not so simple, is to is to tell you the financial cost of mental ill health. So this has been, there are different assessments of it, but this has been evaluated at close to 120 billion pounds sterling, uh, uh, you know, per year. Uh, to give you an idea of what that means, uh, this is about 5% of the UK's GDP. Uh, another way of seeing it is, it amounts to about 1500 pounds per year per Britain. Uh, it's also roughly uh, equivalent to the, the amount spent each year on education in the UK. So those are really, really big numbers. Now, that's just the financial cost of, of mental ill health. Uh, obviously, the main cost of mental ill health is the human cost, the suffering that is associated with mental ill health, the welfare cost, as an economist would put it. And that is very, very difficult to quantify and to evaluate, but um, it is obviously something that, that needs to be addressed. Now, let's focus on the relationship between work and your mental health. Your research focuses on this two-way connection. Could you talk about the, that two-way connection for us? Yes, so uh, what is meant by this two-way connection is that uh, mental health has a causal impact on your ability to work and your performance at work, uh, while at the same time, the demands of your jobs or your, if you experience a, a spell of unemployment, for example, so your labor market state has an impact on your mental health. Uh, so it, you know, going, speaking about the former direction of causality first, it, it's a well-documented side effect of depression, for example, that people who suffer from depression find it much harder to get up in the morning, go to work and, you know, perform their duties. Um, you know, depression makes you feel tired, so to speak, even if it's not necessarily physical tiredness. Uh, so in that sense, uh, mental health affects your your ability to go and, 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 and perform at work to, to, to the best of your abilities. And that's well documented. Conversely, uh, it's been known for a while that uh, episodes of economic uh, recession or, you know, and, and at, at the individual level, episodes of unemployment are very detrimental to people's mental health. Uh, it's also, and that's kind of more of the topic of my own research, it's, it's also, uh, uh, there's also evidence that working in different types of jobs uh, uh, have, you know, may have different impacts on your mental health. There are jobs that uh, are stress loaded or that are, uh, you know, very uh, repetitive and routine and kind of give you a, a, a feeling of lack of meaningfulness. And those, those jobs, uh, either because they're stressful or because they're, uh, you know, they're not very fulfilling, uh, have, uh, have an impact on, on your mental health. Well, let, let's focus on those type of jobs. Your research, as you mentioned, focuses on the type of jobs that are damaging to your mental health, or let's say they're, they're very stressful. Could you talk about those stressful jobs for us? Yes. So let me first talk about, uh, uh, I'll give you examples in a minute, but let me just first talk about kind of long-term trends in the labor market. Uh, there's a documented trend in the sort of in the, the distribution of jobs, if you like, in, in the economy over the past few decades. Uh, and that trend is away from jobs that are physically hazardous, but towards jobs that are perceived by uh, workers as, you know, less meaningful, less fulfilling, and more stressful. 
right? So in other words, the, 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 it looks like the mental health toll taken by, by the jobs on, you know, that are offered on the, on the labor market is increasing on a trend over time. Now you were mentioning the uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, at the, in, the, in the introduction. Uh, obviously that's, you know, that uh, COVID-19 outbreak has been a huge shock to, 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 to labor markets and a huge reallocation shock and a huge sort of downward shock to labor demand. <clears throat> and, and also it has uh, added a dimension of stress to a lot of jobs. Now, in terms of specific examples of jobs that uh, kind of rank high, if you like, in, in terms of stress content, and that is also relevant to the pandemic, even in normal times, occupations that rank very high in, in, in the sort of stress or you know, mental health strain scale are, uh, are occupations in, in the healthcare sector. So doctors, nurses, you know, care home attendants, uh, psychologists, vets, you know, all of these, these people, uh, all of these occupations rather are, are, are usually very stressful. Uh, now, they're also the occupations that by far have, have held up the best, if you like, in terms of labor demand during the pandemic. You know, labor demand collapsed across the board during the spring lockdown uh, that started in, in late March last, last spring. Uh, but it hasn't collapsed equally in all occupations and, and the occupations that have held up the best where labor demand has kind of remained, you know, reasonably high is in healthcare, precisely in healthcare. So those jobs that are very, very high in, in the stress scale. Now, let's talk about the labor market policies. As we all know that there has been a huge array of policies in response to the pandemic. Now, how would you assess the effect of these policies in terms of their impact on mental health? Yes, I, th I think that's a very important question, not just in the context of the COVID-19 crisis, but, but more generally in, uh, you know, in, in any context of assessing any labor market policy. So, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, kind of first order objective of the policies that have been uh, put together uh, during the, the spring lockdown, so the first and foremost, the Coronavirus Job Retention Scheme, or CJRS, and its uh, kind of sibling aimed at, um, at self-employed uh, workers, uh, the primary objective of those policies uh, was to, uh, you know, avoid mass layoffs. So, you know, uh, sort of tied over some, some jobs uh, 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 you know, during the, 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 the lockdown uh, where you know, demand was collapsing uh, across the board. Uh, now, one key question in, in, uh, in kind of the design of those policies is not just to put people back into work when they've lost their jobs, but also put people back into the right jobs. And now the question of, you know, that question is known by economists as the question of mismatch. And that question is usually uh, thought about in terms of, uh, you know, skills. Do I have the right skills for the job that, that I'm, I'm assigned to? Or does the, conversely, does the job that I'm assigned to has the right skill requirements for me? What I would argue is that it's very obviously very important to think of mismatch in terms of skills and to put the right people into the right jobs in terms of skills. But it's also very important to think about the mental health consequences of putting people back into work and also back into the right jobs. Uh, when I... Uh, you know, if I create a job and, and take an unemployed worker and, and find a job for them, well, this is great, but that job might be uh, a very stressful job. And, uh, and that very stressful job might have detrimental effect on that person's mental health, which, you know, you know eventually down the line might, uh, might give rise to uh, costs, both financial and also in terms of suffering. So, you know, when I suppose I design a policy that creates a job, uh, I create value by taking an unemployed, somebody who's unemployed and getting them to, to work. So, you know, by that person starts producing and as such I, that creates economic value. But above and beyond that, I'm also on average helping with that person's future mental health, you know, and that is an additional benefit of that policy that should be taken into account when, when designing policies. Thank you, Fabian. Thank you, Ramon.